Wow. Minis over there. <laughs> Your minis over there playing the piano. Hey folks, I'm Scotty Blades, and this is the vanishing of SS Willie. And I'm not talking about my wiener when I jump into cold water. No, this is described by the YouTube channel Night Signal Entertainment as a analog horror short film. The presentation style of this is much like the silent films of old-timey Hollywood. And right now, the big thing in the horror genre is Steamboat Willie, the first versions of Mickey Mouse. So I have been digging through the internet to find the scariest content that I can. And this is analog horror, which is my favorite kind of horror. But it's not coming at you with gore and jump scares. This is much more of a story-based film. There's a lot of reading, which makes it very cozy, but at the same time, there's an unnerving creepiness to it that escalates throughout the film. And you'll see what I mean. Let's check it out here together. Night Signal Entertainment presents... In 1928, a documentary was created detailing the disappearance of a commercial steamship, the SS Willie. They made documentaries in 1928. <laughs> Before it could premiere, a fire broke out in the studio, destroying the only known prints of the film. How much has been lost to time, the history of us as people, to frickin' fires, man? Like the libraries of Alexandria. Until now, it's considered lost to history. I swear, fire gives birth and fire destroys. And we gotta make more records of stuff. The Vanishing of S.S. Willie. I already love the aesthetic of the film. In 1909, from the port of Podunk Landon, a small vessel known as the S.S. Willie made her last known voyage. Her crew, along with her cargo, never made it to port, nor was the ship ever found. The story of her disappearance has long remained a mystery. That there is just a giant wooden coffin. I, man, boats nowadays scare me. I couldn't imagine riding that thing back in the day. In this motion picture, I have compiled newly discovered evidence, an interview, and finally an expedition that I believe will be of great import to those affected by the tragedy and those with a curious mind. Signed, Ben Collins. Part one, the crew. Okay, we gotta pause this and take a look at these guys. <laughs> I'm so glad that they're keeping with the idea that this is normal. That anthropomorphic animal people is normal and that this is not out of the ordinary, that the captain is a kid cat. <laughs> First mate's a goat, but... Let's see here. So the captain says, Captain Puss and Paws, and here's the first mate, Billy. And there's the deckhand. There's the chambermaid, which is a terrible position to have on a boat because, you know, at least nowadays, if you're a plumber or a janitor, people poop down a chute and it gets sent to wherever feces goes. But back in the olden times, if you took a dookie in a pot, your chambermaid had to show up and take your disgusting dookie and toss it out the window. That's a sucky job. And then there's another deckhand, and then there is the cabin boy. So cat, goat, cow, mouse, pig, mouse. So I'm guessing that's Mickey and that's supposed to be Minnie. Just that picture right there is unnerving. That's very creepy. Very cool looking photo. According to official records, these individuals made up the crew of the SS Willie at the time of its final voyage. Out of respect for living relatives, I shall not disclose their identities, but it is of vital importance that you know their faces. The Witness. I wonder if it's Pete. Because you know, a big thing back in the short was Pete the pirate. I managed to track down the last living witness who happened to come to close contact with some of the SS Willie's cabin crew. They assisted in loading the cargo just before the vessel's final voyage. You're about to witness the interview I conducted with this individual for their own safety. They have asked for their face not to be shown. So that, ooh. I know we're not showing their face, but 
Haggard there is not hard to spot on the street. I only met one of the crew members, but I'll never forget his face. He was the ship's cabin boy, a young mouse named Redacted. Um, that's the guy that we think is Mickey Mouse. We talked a bit while loading the ship, and he was love struck. He talked about it being his last voyage, said he was getting hitched. Ah, oh, two days from retirement, two months from marriage. <laughs> he kept saying that he and Redacted were going to finally make music together. Ah, I see. Something seemed wrong. There was this look in his eyes that told me he was up to something. To this day, I remember those eyes. Uh, okay. Okay. That look. <laughs> Even without him saying the look, gaze upon that. That yeah, that guy right there. It's almost like he's got an attitude about something. So Mickey, Mickey's art. Is that how this picture looked in the beginning? Yeah. How come I didn't notice that? And he's got his arms crossed in a defensive position. So I don't know why I didn't notice that. Because like. The cat looks, I guess, normal. The cow looks dumb. <laughs> the goat looks like he's posing for a year yearbook photo. The pig, if you really look at these two, they've got some some odd mannerisms about them. His expression and I'm since this is Minnie, I'm guessing her expression. Interesting. Yeah, that's certainly a look. That's the look of a killer. The log. This is what the chambermaid threw out last night that the captain made. Log tossing. The following are water damaged documents I have recently discovered by the shorelines between Podunk Landing and Boondock. I will present their contents to you here as I have discovered them so that you may come to your own conclusion. November the 18th, Podunk Land and the crew finished taking in and checking cargo. All cargo accounted for. At noon, we left port for Boondock, 19th of November. I was awakened by the sound of strange music in the middle of the night. The next morning, one of the deckhands had gone missing. Uh-oh. I suspect one of the crew may be playing a practical joke. 20th of November. Music was playing again last night, but I swear it sounded like screaming. Ooh. Our other deckhand was gone or has gone missing. The remaining crew is starting to become very frightened. I have assured the crew that the culprit will be found by the end of our journey. I will be arming myself tonight. So he's getting himself a pistol or something. 21st of November, something hideous is afoot. Last night there was no music, but foul smell started to infest the halls. Both the cabin boy and the chambermaid have gone missing. That's Mickey and Minnie! The first mate's panicking, and I have no choice but to seek the nearest port today. Well, of course he's panicking. The The two deckhands are missing, and Mickey and Minnie are missing, which basically, as far as the pecking order is concerned, he's next. I found the music. Oh, my gosh. Mickey, Minnie, missing, music playing. He said that he was looking to make music with Minnie. And he had a weird look to his eye, according to the witness. And now he found the music. And people were screaming at night. And a foul odor. The expedition. Based on the findings, I decided I had had enough information to embark on an expedition to finally uncover the vessel's location. Using the dates found in the recovered logs, the location of the recovered documents, and the relative speed of the vessel, I have pinpointed an approximate location where the vessel might be located. Yeah, right there in the lower intestines. <laughs> that's, a, that's a weird map. After a day's travel, our crew arrived at my calculated destination. It was there I sent one of my crew beneath the water with a camera to take footage of anything they found. I cannot 
wait to see 1920s black and white photography underwater for the camera. Just this footage right here is unsettling. There's a lot of jobs back in the olden times that I don't want. One of those is wearing a giant pot on my head that's fastened with screws, hoping that the pressure stays while I go underwater. What you are about to see are the photographs I recovered from the diving expedition that took place there. They are not for the faint of heart. I've seen it all. Never mind. Here we are. The SS Man, that's great. Oh! Oh! The captain! He didn't make it. Hmm. Those are piano keys, or at least the teeth have been fashioned in such a sense that they're piano keys. So I'm already seeing the reference and the hark back in the horrific interpretation of, in the original short of Steamboat Willie, Minnie and Mickey go around using animals as instruments. And uh, they take a goat and they crank his tail and he plays music and they spin a cat around and it wells and they, I think they blow into a duck like a set of bagpipes and they pull on pig's tails to make them oink at certain positions for like percussion. So, Mickey and Minnie are making music, and they have found the music, and this guy's dead, and he's been mutilated in such a way that his teeth are piano keys. Wow. So, the ears, that looks like we know that the deck hands went missing first. So the ears, that's the pig, I think. So that's the, that's the pig. Yeah, pretty sure that's the pig. And then I'm guessing that's the cow, maybe? If you go by order of how they went missing the deck hand one and the deck hand two, so I'm guessing cow and pig. But they turned my boy there into a harp or something, or a bass guitar. There's another skull. So the skull they've drove the gramophone head through, and the vinyl's got R something on it. Wow. As you can see, most of the ship's crew was found dead with many strangely mutilated. However, the bodies of the cabin boy and the chambermaid were never found. Yeah! The chambermaid and the cabin boy? That's Mickey and Minnie! And the bodies were never found, so they, they went and killed these deckhands and first mates and transformed them into music and... Ooh! Ooh! But the captain has not been mutilated. Yeah, the captain's not been mutilated, so... wonder how he died. Or if he did himself. Because in the note, he said he was going to arm himself. So what if he found the crewmates and didn't want to suffer the same... Well, I mean, it wouldn't matter. He'd even be off himself. Mickey Minnie could still turn him into an instrument. But that's, it's curious how he's not an instrument. So we don't know how he went down. Unless that's the... That might be something right there. They never found Mickey and Minnie, huh? From the wreckage, we recovered a record labeled Our Music. Oh, okay, the vinyl said Our Music. It may be the only remaining clue to what happened on that vessel. Let's play it. Listen closely, everybody. Somebody queefed.
Okay, they, they said they said in the <clears throat> in the articles that they heard screaming at night. They thought it was music, but they heard screaming. This was after the deck can went missing. And this is awful. It just this just popped in my head. This is awful to think. But so Minnie and Mickey they they capture deck can number two or they, they get a hold of the first mate or whatever. And they got the first mate tied up and gagged, and he's sitting there just, woo, woo, and Mickey's over there. <laughs> Mickey's hitting the ribs to play the bass on, a, on the pig guy, like the, the deckhand that the first mate knew and was crew members with and probably shared a bunch of meals and memories, and Mickey's over there. <laughs> and Minnie's over there playing the piano on the freaking cow head. Oh, that's awful to think. <laughs> The first mates of her just, woo, woo. <laughs> God, that's awful. Wow. <laughs> Wow. The vanishing of S.S. Willie. A night signal entertainment film. Commanded by the pilot, Mr. Seymour Steele. The owners gave him orders on the... Written and directed by Nick Lives. Well done, Nick. So my first instinct is I want more. I want to see this universe expand. I want more. I want this to become a series. And I want to see Mickey and Minnie blending in with other ships and making their music on other voyages and just watching this expand into the monster that it's capable of being. My favorite thing about this, though, is that this doesn't rely on gore or jump scares. Yeah, we're shown mutilation, but we're shown mutilation in such an artistic form that my mind takes it and understands what it is. It's not like a human centipede or a wreath made out of nine legs. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I understand that's a bass or a piano. Even though it's made from a body, it's still, it, it computes with me. So it doesn't rely on crazy jump scares. It just relies on storytelling and your imagination to raise the tension levels and it leaves once again going back to your imagination which makes things way scarier than they're supposed to be you get some answers as to what happened to the crew but not all the answers so like what went down with the captain how did, did they sink the ship stuff like that that was very cool that was very very cool that was awesome i really really enjoyed that yeah Nice little Mickey Mouse analog horror right there. If you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, then you know what to do. Do the YouTube thing. Zombie smash the like button and join the League of Blades. Everybody that hits the subscribe button gets a used flannel. Now, it's proven effective at keeping you protected from evil. It's covered in zombies, guts, and werewolf hair, and vampire spit, and my pit stains. But it's been put through the ringer, so you know that it works. we got a lot of other scary content here on the channel, like reviews and breakdowns and analysis and playthroughs of your favorite horror games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill and reaction content so much more. Thank you all for hanging out with me and I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye everybody.